Hey there, how's it going? Welcome to Dominions 5. My name is Mew. This time around, I'm going to be playing a multiplayer game set in the early age. And I'm going to be playing as... Fomoria. This video will serve as the intro for this series. So in this video, I'm just going to talk a little bit about Fomoria, as well as the god that I made, the skills that I chose, and the bless that I went with. And then the next video going up in this series will be turn 1 to 3. So if you just want to see gameplay, wait for that one. If you do enjoy this series or any of the series on the channel, please remember to engage with the video in a manner commensurate with the desires and values of the YouTube algorithm. And a big thank you as always to my Patreon supporters for helping me keep going making these videos. You can find my Patreon linked in the description below if you're interested. And with that out of the way, let's take a little look at Fomoria. So here we have Fomoria, the Cursed Ones. This is one of the nations that I've actually got some familiarity with since I played them in Dominions 4 once. Uh, and I think that game is still on my channel as well, if uh, anyone's still watching Dominions 4 playthroughs. I'm sure it's terrible. But uh, yeah, I do remember these guys a little bit. It was a very long time ago. Fomoria is like the quintessential, very strong in the early to mid game nation. You have really great troops, you have really good researchers. You have uh, extremely strong magic to carry you through the mid-game. Basically just, you know, spam air elementals and horde of skeletons. And that solves, what, 90% of your problems through the, <laughs> the early portion of Dominions? So being a strong air and death nation, pretty good. But uh, just in case you've never played Fomori before, I'll take a moment just to look through the commanders and the units. And I'll also point out some changes in the balance mod we're running. Since, uh, yeah, there are a few nerfs to this nation since they are as I said, quite strong. And this game is also running snow.dm, so you'll notice that everything also has snow movement. So that's what that's from. But yeah, nations split up into Firbolg, Medians, and Memorians. Uh, first five commanders are pretty mundane. We have a Firbolg version of our scout and a Fomorian version of our scout. Not much to say there. Uh, you can see that in this mod, the Fomorians are all cursed, which is lore accurate, I believe. <laughs> That's why they've all got goat heads. And this doesn't really apply to the commanders much, but all of the Morians also do not like being led by small people, so they have that restriction now as well. Next two commanders are leaders, so I've got a Furbog leader. They're pretty good at 60 leadership, but it's still only plus zero for two. And then that is uh, identical for the Fomorian version again. And once more, you can see cursed and in leader size. And last guy is the Unmarked Champion. So the Unmarked Fomorians are not cursed, apparently. Uh, which again, lore accurate. But uh, this guy is Sacred and a level 1 Priest. We have unit versions of these guys. So that's the kind of mundane stuff. Mages then, Furbolg Druids. Uh, these guys are not very powerful, <laughs> as far as mages go. A1, I mean, the fact that it's A means you can get it up a bit in a storm, which is nice. But uh, besides that, they get our picks, which are water, earth, and nature. We do also get some people with uh, death on this nation as well, but the druidic guys get water, death, and nature. At least the furbogs. I think the um, the Fomorian druid is different, right? Don't you get death? Yeah. But uh, yeah, furbog druids, not much to write home about in terms of magical power. One thing that does stand out about these guys, though, is how efficient they are as researchers, because it's 70 gold for 9 research. And I'm pretty sure that's one of the best research efficient mages in the game, right? Or gold efficient mages in the game. Uh, I could be wrong about that, you can let me know in the comments, but I always remember that um, people used to say Furball Druid is really really good cost efficient researcher. And yeah, hard to argue with 9 research for 70 gold. I think anything go that goes, goes over, um, you know, a research point per 10 gold is always pretty good, right? Uh, for and Druid. You can see comparatively terrible researcher. 200 gold gets you 11? Awful. Uh, but these guys are priests, they're also much better in combat mages. A2 gets them up to A3 in a storm, that lets you do all the big uh, attacker stuff, right? Full size, full size air alleys and thunder strikes. And yeah, they get water, death, and nature as picks. Uh, again, not too much to say, I mean, pretty basic mages otherwise. Fomorian isn't the worst chassis in the world, gets you lots of hit points. And uh, these guys are also part of the unmarked cast, so they don't carry the curse either, which is nice. 
Uh, Nemedians then. Nemedian champions I love. These guys are nerfed slightly in the mod we're running. They no longer have priestly power. Which, um, yeah, again, I think that's a law thing. I don't think they're supposed to be priests. So. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But they are A1, D1. These are commander versions of a nice unit version we have of these guys. These are just such sick units. I love Nemedian warriors. And I remember in Dominions 4 just relying on these guys hardcore. So I'm hoping I can do the same thing in Dominions 5. Uh, they have a incredible stats across the board. Full set of armor, golden shield, golden spear that's magical, which is fantastic. So built-in magic weapons. They get to chuck two javelins. They got partial dark vision. They're even stealthy and glamoured. So my hope is in the early game I can expand with nothing but Nemedians led by <laughs> Nemedian champions. And then when we finish expanding, we'll have a bunch of um, glamoured armies. Ready to just uh, invade somebody. In theory. But uh, that's what we'll be looking to do with this guy. Uh, definitely my unit of choice for expanding. Also a phenomenal leader. Plus one for three. And then on top of that has inspirational. So, I mean, what more is there to say? Just S tier commander right there. <laughs> the media champion. Hell yeah. Uh, oh, they're also iron vulnerable. I think that's... This didn't exist in Dominions 4, right? So that's probably a change? I can't remember. I feel like Ironvolt is new though. Well, relatively speaking. Uh, next up, the Fomorian Prince. This guy is added in the balance mode we're running because of the min unit size stuff. Because uh, the small Fomorians don't like size anything lower than size 4. The big guys, the big Fomorian Giants, don't like anything smaller than size 6. Uh, since they are size 6. So, to make it so that you know, you have to rely on the Fomorian Kings to lead these guys around, uh, there's a slightly smaller version. Fomorian Prince, only two wreck points, which is really nice. And only 180 gold, which is cheaper than the Druids, which is pretty sick. Uh, these guys are cursed though, but they're better priests at Holy 2. Slightly different picks. And they get a bunch of extra bonuses as well that I find quite nice. They can go underwater and they have Gift of Water Breathing and Sailing. So if we have to expand on or around or through or underwater, uh, it's really nice that we can get these out quite cheaply and quickly, uh, which is pretty cool. So I like having the option of having these guys recruited. They're not as magically powerful as, well, anything else we can recruit, really. But they fill a lot of holes in terms of just uh, command. And they're, you know, they're still a big Fomorian Prince chassis as well, so you could thug these guys out too if you wanted to. That might be kind of fun. But yeah, this is a balance mod edition. Full commander. Uh, Nemedian Sorceress is up next. These guys, I remember being workhorse mages in uh, Dominions 4. A2, D2 with a pick in potentially up to A3 or D3 or some random bits of water or nature. It's just such a god tier combo, because you can cloud trapeze into enemy provinces and then just take them using Horde of Skeleton Spam. Amazing stuff. E they even look like Superman or Superwoman, I guess. <laughs> yeah, in their outfit, you know? That's what they are. They just fly into random provinces and then, just like Superwoman, or Supergirl, is it? Just like Supergirl, uh, they spam skeletons at people. I don't know comics. But 245 gold is, I guess, a bit expensive compared to the other stuff we can recruit. But hell yeah, I mean, the Nemedians in general just rock. I mean, <laughs> the Nemedian champions, Nemedian warriors, and Nemedian sorks just absolute S tier across the board. Family of units. Uh, I love these things. They're also spell singers as well. So, you know, that lets them. <laughs> that does let them cast um, Horde of Skeleton more before they get tired, which is fantastic. Easily one of my favourite mages in the game. Uh, looking forward to getting some mileage out of them. Start getting them out as soon as I can. Only two wreck points as well. They are cap only, unfortunately. But yeah, I can get one of these out every turn. Just god tier. Uh, and last but not least, Fomorian King. Uh, these guys are extremely expensive. I don't think you want to just churn these guys out. I think you want to recruit a few of these to get up big uh, buffs in combat. And then leave it at that. I remember not really recruiting many of these in the Dom 4 game I played. I think I just had like a couple for bigger spells and that was it. Just so much more enticing to get tons of Nubian Sorceresses out. But uh, yeah, I mean they have the Gift of Water Breathing and the Selling, just like the Prince does. Uh, they have full slots and great, you know, chassis stats if you want to thug them out. A3 and D2 plus Holy 2 
is really, really useful across the board and could be A4, which is really sick. Uh, I think that's going to let you do most of the air buffs. It certainly lets you forge uh, boosters anyway, so not much of a problem. But yeah, I don't rely on these guys much beyond just getting a couple of luxury guys out to do sight searching and big spells. But, uh, you know, undeniably cool commanders. Tons of leadership too. 60 undead, 120, plus 2 for 4 <laughs> mundane leadership. Uh, yeah, as always, you know, great units. Bit of resistance as well. So, this commanders. Uh, units then. We have three different types of Furbolg. Not the most useful units ever, but... I don't know, I remember Furbolg warriors being better than they work out in practice. I think maybe they were better in Dominions 4 or something, I don't know. But, uh... <laughs> Kind of disappointed. There was another game I played. Was it the uh, Iru game where I had Furball Warriors? And I remember them being pretty good, but it turns out no, they're not very good. Uh, the defense is, you know, it deceptively looks kind of decent though. They don't have a helmet, but they do have a shield at least. And they come with javelins. I feel like they should be good units, but they don't really work out very well. They've got slightly higher than normal magic resistance for mundane troops, and slightly higher than normal hit points as well, which is kind of nice. High defense. Their morale is nerfed in this balance mod. I think they're supposed to have like 11 morale. So that's something, but... I don't know, I feel like the bronze spear ones should be better than they are. But, I don't know. The slingers are completely useless, I think. <laughs> but, I used to like the football warriors. I mean, I guess they can just fill out space, right? Uh, for Morians then, I don't think I ever recruit these things. You want to have a cursed size 4 unit in the front? Probably not. But uh, they do hold up surprisingly well during expansion. I think our starting army is the Spearmen, maybe? And... Yeah, I mean, they're not bad. Maybe you get Warriors in the starting army, actually. I mean, let me just check. This is a new game I've just fired up. What was our starting army? Oh, it's the Warriors. Okay. Yeah, that's why they hold together so well, then. The Warriors have decent stats. 16 protection and 13 defense with a full set of armor and 33 hit points. Even though they're size 4 and cursed, they, they, yeah, they stand up for a very long time. And a big length 4 weapon doing piercing damage with 21 strength. They're nice units. I don't ever want to be recruiting them as the problem. <laughs> I'd rather be getting Numidian warriors out instead. And the thing is, you don't really have a, a huge amount of choice between these things, because they're all pretty much the same cost, more or less. I mean, Numidians are 35, 22, 24. These are... 20, 17, 11. The big ones are 30, 27, 17. So almost like, I mean, these are slightly more resources, but slightly less gold. These are more rec points. You could, I mean, you wouldn't be able to get out like two of the smaller things, would you? Maybe the militia if you really wanted to, but again, I don't think you particularly want to get these guys out, do you? I think if you're recruiting stuff in your cap, you want the Numidian Warriors. That's my takeaway anyway. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've already spoken about these guys. These things are sick. Last two units and then are cap only sacreds. We have the unmarked, who are big and chunky. They're just like the Morian warriors, except they're not cursed and they can take a bless. So yeah, I mean, they're probably pretty good. But um, again, I'd rather have Nemean warriors. Is that weird? They're just so expensive as well. Fifty-five gold. I don't know, it depends what bless you're running, I suppose. If you're running a nice bless for these guys, probably pretty sick walking around with them. And we have a giant version of them as well, a size 6 unit. Uh, these guys are cursed, but you know, also sacred. A little bit of coal resist built in, which is kind of sick. Carry a javelin. Javelin on like big high strength dudes is always pretty funny. <laughs> this big ranged, <laughs> ranged 24 javelin hitting you for 26 damage. Uh, 6 attack though, since he's a cyclops. Not very good depth perception. Uh, yeah, again though, ex I think prohibitively expensive. It's one of the big problems with, with both of these things. Like, huge expense for early age, right? Imagine recruiting a 75 gold unit regularly in, in early age. Like, I just wouldn't do it, I don't think. <laughs> doesn't even have a helmet. <laughs> 37 resources. How are you more resources if you don't have a helmet? I guess because it's just much bigger. Less armor, more resources. Classic. Uh, that's from Warrior anyway. I mean, they're a, a powerhouse nation. Um, we really need re um, resources, though, to play them up. I mean, all of our units just... Our good units all need lots of resources, right? 
Uh, interestingly, the medium warriors are actually the cheapest in terms of resources between our like good units. Uh, but even them, I mean, 22 each. If you've got 200 resources in your cap, you get out 9 a turn, <laughs> or whatever. Let's say, if you've got 220, you'll get out 10, let's say. Uh, I mean, yeah, they're just expensive. But Great Nation, uh, let me know what you think of them in the comments. I will now show you the god that I have made with this nation. Don't close the video when you see it, okay? Promise me you won't just instantly go, what the fuck is that, and then close the video, okay? Just, just bear with me, alright? Don't... Alright, I'm gonna show it now. Don't... Don't laugh. Okay, I'm putting it up now. You have to... Don't laugh and don't close the video. Don't leave a comment saying, what the fuck is that, Mew? Just... Let it... Just... Okay, I'm switching over now. Okay, look, hear me out. Alright? I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Why do you have an imprisoned... Demi-Lich with... An incarnate blessed part of which is reanimators, right? Good question. So when I was testing the nation, I tested first of all with an awake trinity, because I never used a trinity before. And I thought, oh, this would be cool, let's play around with the trinity, see what we can do. I had some, you know, worse scales, because my trinity was awake. I was trying to play around with like the sacred uh, units and stuff. And then I thought, ah, I don't really like this much, I think I'd rather just rely on the Nemedians. Which means I don't need any kind of awake bless. And then I was playing around with, you know, imprisoned pretenders with just light rainbow blesses and stuff. And then the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know what, Fomori is so strong early on and so good at expanding that if you just take anything in prison with like decent skills to get out units, you could pretty much do whatever you wanted. Like it doesn't really matter, because they're gonna be fine. And later on, I don't know if I can get it up on the screen. I probably can't. No. Later on, we have a national summon, the Morrigans. Uh, and unfortunately, the battlefield enchantment version of that has been nerfed as well. It doesn't exist. But we can summon Morrigans, and Morrigans are sick sacred units. So taking an imprisoned incarnate bus isn't the worst thing, because it can apply to the Morrigan later. But more importantly than that, I've always wanted to use the reanimator's bus on something. I don't know what exactly, because it, it I'm pretty sure this. This bless is just worse than every other thing you could possibly buy for the point investment. But, Fomoria is so strong, we can do a stupid bless, okay? And my thinking is, later on in the game, when this guy wakes up, the region and the reanimators is actually pretty sick for our... The region's good for the giants anyway. And this is kind of cool for the Morrigan too. It's also cool for um, sacred spellcasters who drop big. Like, imagine a guy dropping shimmering fields and turning half of everything he kills into soulless. That's kind of funny, right? I don't know. But reanimators is like a dumb bless. Okay, I know that. It's stupid. Nothing about this is optimal. But that's okay. Because you can get away with suboptimal for Fomoria, and that's the point. And I'd really like to actually use reanimators at least once <laughs> in a game of Dominions. So here we have a harmless weather instrument, the Demi Lich. There might have been easier ways to get this build in vanilla, I don't know. But um, another problem in the balance mode running is you can't have... Um, you can't have Dominion 1 Pretenders imprisoned. You can't have Human Ghosts, so I couldn't test those guys. So I had to test the Demi Lich. I'm pretty sure you could get better scales though in vanilla with the Demi Lich. Because the Demi Lich is also nerfed in the balance of what we're running. Um, he costs 200 points base instead of like 120 or something. Um, and I've never used the Demi Lich before. I don't know how you keep this thing alive with three hit points. It's going to wake up and just die to like Seeking Arrows or something. Uh, but that's also interesting. So, let's explain the build then. As I said, we don't really need much in the way of anything for Fomoria. They can get away with any build at all, I think. Well, I took an Imprisoned Guy with decent scales, especially going heavy in resources, to just try and quickly get out as many Nemedians as possible to expand early on. And once we can recruit like, you know, seven or eight Nemedians a turn, that's basically an expansion army every two turns, and we can hit that point pretty quickly. So we'll expand fine even just with these scales. Even threw in some luck as well, which is kind of weird with order, but I mean we just have across the board just great scales. 
and a bit of magic as well to boost up our furbog. So I just wanted like the best set of skills I could get on an imprisoned pretender, while also taking reanimators, and then something that isn't bad. And regen's like, you know, we don't have much nature ma magic on our nation, and nature magic is really good on giant nations, you know, for regen, really. So since we have no way of casting mass regen, I mean, being able to cast regen seems pretty good, right? And having the Morrigan, who have like, what, 25 defense or something crazy, so they don't get hit very often, um, giving those guys regen as well might be pretty cool. They might gradually benefit from it over time. So we're imprisoned with the best skills we can get, with a goofy bless on a goofy pretender. And I don't really have much more to say than that. This definitely is not optimal, right? I confess. But it should be fine. And then it would be fun to have a reanimator's plus. And that's it. That's the extent of my thinking. So, you know, let me know if this is... <laughs> this seems pretty good to you. Um, don't really just have immortality, but I don't know. You still lose him for three months every time he gets got. I'm not sure how to use the Demi Lich itself, to be honest with you. I guess he needs, like... Can a Demi Lich Stygian Path? Can you... <laughs> can you Stygian Path if you can't map move? I guess we'll find out if we reach the point where he wakes up, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I don't really have much more to say than that. There's a uh, harmless weather instrument. Fingers crossed it goes well, you know? I'd like to have a nice, comfortable early game and then, uh... post to the mid-game. Maybe rush down a neighbor quickly with big clamored Namedian armies early on. Hit the mid game with uh, nice research. Got summoning Morrigans, and then this guy wakes up and we have a reanimator's regen blast. I think that's cool. Hopefully it works. Besides that, I don't have much to say. Uh, I do know that uh, in addition to this game running the J Barrett and Balance mod and Snow.dm, it is also running the Less Water mod. So you might see some water nations in this game, because they are not water nations when you run the Less Water mod. They are coastal nations instead. Uh, the map that we're playing on is, I believe it's an old cartographic revision map. I think it's agnostically the best. If you play on the Ruby Discord, one of the named maps we use sometimes. So it's probably awful, because that seems to be <laughs> the thing people really like saving the like worst possible maps, just to make everybody unhappy. And yeah, that's everything to say about Warrior and My God. So, next time you hear from me, it will be turn one to three. Hope you enjoy it. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I will see you then.